Okay, so in this video, I'm going to try to show you the steps that you need to follow to create an REPL and uh, work off of the uh, assignments in the textbook and the videos that will be attached to the lessons. I need you to go to REPL.IT, REPL.IT. You have already created an, uh, a, uh, an account that will work with this. The reason why we're doing that is because uh, for the most part, uh, your class may be working with a Chromebook. And uh, this is the easy way to do it without having to install a, uh, a Python interpreter as the book prescribes. There is no such thing necessarily for Chromebook. So we're using a web tool. And REPL.IT is uh, very successful in doing what we need it to do. So I'm going to log in to my account. And uh, unfortunately, the way that it's been working out is that even though it tells me my account and it, it knows my password, if I just accept that, it will give me an error. I'm going to type in IDT games and my password and log in. Once I'm logged in, I'm going to create a new REPL. It's the button, the blue button up here in the top right. Click on that, and it's going to ask me what language, and we're exclusively using Python in this class. It might tell me a lot of stuff over here. I'm going to press the backspace to delete it, because as an example, I'm just going to tell you something that, that happens in Chapter 4. I'm going to start out by typing Chapter 04, very important, no spaces, uh, the, because you really shouldn't use spaces when it comes to naming files. And uh, because this is going to be the notes, uh, for the most part, there you're going to have files that are going to be called chapter, whatever the chapter is, notes, uh, or chapter for lab. For example, the first lab will be called lab one. If there's a lab two, you'll just call it lab two. Since these are just notes, I'll just type on notes, uh, and I'll create the REPL. When the REPL is created, I will be taken to the editor, which will allow me then to type in the code. As you're reading the chapter, it's going to be, it should be pretty straightforward, fairly obvious of what the notes that you should be typing are. For example, when I'm looking at the book uh, outside of this video, um, chapter four starts on page 41, and uh, you'll notice that there's the important stuff has uh, read I read the uh, headlines. It starts out with basic comparisons and then some tags or code that you need to type in to test. Uh, on page 43, you'll learn about indentation. In page 44, using AND and OR uh, and Boolean variables. And uh, we'll do ELSE and IFS in page 46. There's text comparisons later, and then there's going to be just a whole bunch of tags that you can type in and test out on your own. Um, I would recommend that as much as you can to copy, not copy and paste, but rather type some of that code. It's not very long and just run it and uh, see how it works out so that you can start to get used to what to expect uh, when you're typing code. Um, as a sample here, I've already created a, a file called Chapter 04 Notes. And in the videos that follow, the author of the book is actually the one that you're going to be hearing from. He is going to give you some samples on not necessarily the very basic stuff that you, that you read in the book or that you see in the other videos, but uh, how the uh, code which, that you're reading will actually be used. So I think that that's very useful to, to read, to look into, and to practice. For example, he's going to be talking about, about these comparisons. Well, what are you comparing? You're comparing variables. And uh, rather than just going through the very basic stuff, as page 41 does, I mean, don't miss out on that if you have never used any programming software before. It tells you, you know, to assign values directly to a variable so that Variable A is 4 and variable B is 5, things like that. Since we want to program games, this one, these videos will actually are a little bit going to be more practical. So uh, it's going to be asking you things like, well, you're going to be dealing with temperature. And it's just say that temperature is going to be equal to the input that somebody gives in 
to the question, what is the temperature? This is something that you did in the previous lab, question mark. And then say something, well, because temperature is actually put in as a string, you have to convert it to a uh, integer, a number. So temperature is equal to the integer of the temperature. And then if the temperature is greater than 90, then actually I don't need to type then, it's then this is colon, and then say print, it's really hot. And that should be in quotes because it's a string. It's really hot and then, um, well, that's it. I mean, that's all I'm giving you. There's more to the sample when you actually look at the video and then we can say that this program is done. So the temperature is the input of what is the temperature. That is the question. Um, then we convert the temperature to a number. And if the temperature, that number that you put in is greater than 90, say it's really hot. Otherwise, it's going to say nothing unless we say else uh, do something else. Print, it's not hot. I'll run it. I'll probably get some errors. But it says, what is the temperature? Well, I didn't spell it correctly, and that's okay. Let's just say that it's 95 degrees. Enter, and it tells me, oh, it's really hot. Well, that'll give me, I guess, the opportunity now to say, what is the temperature? Where did I misspell it? I'm sure I misspelled it somewhere. Uh, so what is the temperature? It's 90. And let's run it again and uh, give it a different answer. It's going to be less than 90. It's say it's 60. And I guess I should stop it. No, I should run it. Okay, so it's not hot. So I put in 95, and the result of this was that it was really hot and if 60 was it says it's not hot so in the following videos you're actually going to get more instruction of what this should be make sure that you type the uh, the code that the author types in and uh, when you're all said and done make sure that you go and look at the instructions for this part of the chapter so that you know what to turn in I'm going to be creating one more video uh, after the ones that you see from the author that is going to give you some hints on how to go about uh, creating and turning in the, uh, the exercises. And speaking of turning in, now that this is done, this chapter four notes is what I, w I need you to turn in. I mean, the... Um, the files, if you click on your icon here, it's going to give you the opportunity to look at your REPLs. Here's this one. It's called Chapter 4, Zero Notes. When I tell you turn in your Chapter 4 notes or your Chapter 5 lab or whatever it may be, that's what I'm looking for. I click on that. You'll notice how then it gives me this full address. I need you then to copy or cut or retype all of this in. You can just cut that so that when you paste it in the um, in the space on eCampus, I'll be able to click on it and go directly to your assignment by just putting it in the address bar. If you have any questions about how to go about uh, typing in the code, how to save it, and how to turn it in, please send me an email at, or go into the um, into the Slack channel and uh, ask a question, make a comment. Uh, there's multiple ways to get a hold of me. Um, if you need any help, please let me know so that I can render some assistance.